now we know about higher order functions, we can continue to identify other types or other kinds of functions based on what they do. And one such type are predicates. The term predicates come from mathematics. And in programming, it means a function which returns a Boolean value. So a function which returns either true or false. In the last episode, we see, we've seen such function. So let's try to re-implement it. A function greater than 10 is a predicate because it takes a value and it checks if this value is greater than 10. So let's go ahead and use this. And it's true for 11 and false for 1. So this is a, a predicate. And in the previous episode, we created this in a slightly more general way. But there are other uh, types of predicates that we usually use uh, when we program. So for example, you can imagine there's a function which checks if something is empty. And there is a function which checks if something is null. You can imagine a function which checks if some object or some structure has a key or, or something else. And then if we are talking about objects, you can imagine, for example, your own uh, vocabulary. So you can, for example, check for something if it's available or not. And all those functions return true or false based on what is provided and how the, the function is structured. So we can think about those functions as questions. Using predicates, you ask questions and you receive only two values, true or false. And that's the reason we name those uh, functions by prefixing the names with is, has, are, etc. So in certain languages, you can use question marks in variable names. And one of such languages is Clojure. So let's quickly see how it can be done. So for example, in Clojure, you can have a function which is called empty question mark. And then uh, you can have the body. Or you can have a function null. Or you can have a function available. And in JavaScript, you cannot use the question mark in the variable name. In some languages, which have this restriction as well, there is a convention to use the P letter at the end. And this is the convention I prefer because it's more consistent. So here, depending on the word, you can use, you have to use is, has, or are, and it changes. And with this uh, P convention, it's slightly more consistent. So I will be using this approach through this course. So that's an example, empty, null, key. So it means that all those functions are predicates and I expect true or false. But you have to remember that usually in JavaScript, in the JavaScript community, people I use this kind of naming. And if you are working with a team, you should probably use uh, the same naming. It's a very bad idea to just use a different naming than your colleagues. But here in this course, we are free to do whatever you want. And we will use this uh, slightly older convention of using P. And if you have a very um, good imagination, you can almost see that P looks like a question mark. The last point I would like to make is that in JavaScript, since it's a dynamic language, you use predicates to check the types as well. You can use predicates to check the types as well. So let's see an example. If we have a function that checks if a value is a number, let's go ahead, let's try and implement that. So it would be something else and inside the predicate, you can use all the operators, logical operators, such as conjunction or uh, alternative, 
um, and other operators as well. So we have this function and let's check if it works. So, so it's false for A and it's true for two. It is also true for a string with a number. In the previous episode, I briefly told you about the implicit return. Usually predicates are written using the implicit return. So implicit return means that you don't specify, don't state, don't write return. It's uh, implicit. So you can remove that. And if you do that, if you have just one expression, one line, you can remove the curly braces. And this way, it's a slightly more concise. Um, so it also depends on how this predicate is structured because you can have longer predicates and then maybe you should divide them into smaller ones and then combine smaller ones into, into bigger ones. But in this case, I find this more readable than the explicit return. And if you run this, it still works. So it's true and false for um, something which is not a number. So you use predicates in JavaScript to check uh, the type of, uh, of a value. You can use predicates to check for a type of a value. Predicates are important because there are some other functions which use predicates. And since predicates are just functions, and I say that they are other functions which use predicates, which this means that they are other higher order functions that use predicates. And one of them is filter, which allows us to filter some values based on the return from the predicate. So predicate can be think of as a function which filters something. And we will see that in the next episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time.